Hi, how you doing? Welcome back. And welcome to my new studio. My new man cave slash office slash music room. Live from the uh, Monadnock region of southwestern New Hampshire. Well, I'm live at the moment. You're not watching this live. It's on tape. But anyways, you can see here I have much more room spread out. Faces on display, much like my idol and mentor, Low End Lobster. So, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think. Maybe you may miss the Mandela I used to have uh, hanging behind me, but uh, whatever. We're pretty happy with it. It's just still getting some decorating done, still getting it situated. But, anyways, thanks again for joining. Today, we have the Spectre. NS Pulse 4. Nice little bass. Spectre is uh, really uh, an important instrument. Get that tuner on there. An important instrument in the uh, evolution of the electric bass and really uh, kind of the leader of uh, what we've become known more for contemporary basses. Uh, Stuart Spectre was based in New York, he was interested in making instruments. He uh, teamed up with a gentleman named Ned Steinberg, who uh, is a name you should probably remember, sound familiar if you watch my other videos, especially about headless bases. Uh, but Ned Steinberg was a, uh, a cabinet maker. So he came to instrument design and making with no preconceived notions of what a bass guitar was supposed to be. So obviously he knew it needed strings and a neck and all that, but he was able to make a design really that uh, was unencumbered by the weight or the expectations of what you would think a guitar would be. And the, what he came up with was mostly this very ergonomically designed body. You can see the slant here with the high access up here, the horn, the turn down horn on the bottom. And the slight offset here on the waist. This is the classic Spectre design. And Spectre refers to this as the NS design. NS for Ned Steinberg. So any base you see NS, that is what Spectre uses as a designation for this basic body design. And really it's been what they've used since the beginning. Uh, this came out in the late 70s. This is uh, essentially, this is NS4 is what uh, a lot of the four strings are now uh, referred to as, but this is basically an extension of what was the NS2. Now the NS1 was originally a one pickup bass, had kind of a hexagonal design pickup here that mimicked what the P bass pickup looks like. And the NS2 added the jazz bass pickup. Uh, and so two things, three things really, that uh, Spectre did with electronics was First the, uh, elect first, the reverse P pickup. So where very reverse P, what they mean is the magnets are switched on a Fender precision bass. The bass pickup is closer to the neck, and the lower, this part, is closer to the bridge. Well, they switched it. And a lot of people think this would work better because... You know, the closer you are to the bridge, the thinner the sound is, and they thought that a lot of people thought this might balance out sound more. Up to you to decide if you like that or not. Um, and then the addition here of the jazz bass pickup in the bridge. I don't think Spectre was the first to do that, but they were among the first to popularize it and mass produce it. So that was the NS2. And the third thing they did was add active electronics. Um, the Spectre bass was something that was very future looking. The sound is, can be best described as aggressive and it really powered a lot of 80s music. Um, famous people who use Spectre's Sting um, used a transparent white blonde one on the Synchronicity Tour. Um, and that's really where I kind of fell in love with the Spectre, seeing Sting hold on to one of those. Uh, Gene Simmons. And Kiss used Spectres, as did Nikki Six in um, Motley Crue. And uh, one of the 
great uh, ambassadors of Spectre Vases to this day is Doug Wimbish. Um, yeah. Slight foray with uh, Ibanez, uh, but uh, for the most part, has been a tried and true Spectre guy from the beginning. Uh, he actually has one of the first five string Spectre bases ever produced. Um, but uh, Spectre uh, had an interesting history. Stuart Spectre sold the company to Kramer in the late 80s, um, and a lot of the production was moved overseas. Oh, the other thing Spectre had was a neck through construction. This is obviously bolt on. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Moved a lot of the production overseas. Uh, then, um, you know, he got the itch to get back into it, and he started making his own instruments. He started a company called Stuart Spectre Design uh, and utilized the NS uh, prefix again. Um, he was able to finally buy the company back. Uh, he was working out of Saugerties, New York, Wall, Woodstock, New York, uh, and, uh, had, and uh, opened up a uh, shop in Europe and in Korea and really leveraged uh, there's three layers uh, or three series of spectre bases the korean made ones the ones made in czechoslovakia and the ones made in new york for the most part uh they've since added china and, and the like now and the company's been sold now to korg i believe um so stuart spectre is out of the business again but uh really spectre bases are known for high quality across all the lines, the Korean made instruments are excellent quality. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like I said, the aggressive sound. Mike, Mike Starr was another person I meant to mention. Um, Allison Chains and Eddie Jackson from uh, Queensryche. You want to know what a Spectre sounds like? Listen to those bands. Uh, that is the Spectre sound. In your face, very aggressive. So, what's the NS Pulse for? So again, uh, like I said, NS is the body design and this is Spectre's latest takeoff on it. What they've got here is a very, very lightweight instrument. This is made in Korea. Less than eight pounds. They didn't, they didn't weigh it on the scale, but almost all the ones I've seen online are eight pounds or so. It is an ash body and it has a satin finish, what they say, but it's almost like a, a sandblast. If you're all... It's, it's a weird feel, actually. So all the grain here are like valleys. And the way that finishes, it almost feels kind of plasticky. But it's wood, uh, just with the light finish that's on it. You can see right here, on the upper horn here, lots of grain. Um, now, the one thing that's funky in this is they didn't seem to really put a lot of thought into matching the patterns. You know, usually when the grain is off this much, on a body, they paint it. They don't leave it natural like this. So a little bit of a down, of a down mark. This one here has three pieces. One to here, two, and then three. And it's a little bit better match than some other ones, especially these two pieces, they look okay. But down here on this one, it's a little more obvious. It looks like almost a separate control panel. Um, I know Low End Lobster did his review. He has uh, one of the red ones. Um, this is charcoal gray is what this color is. And his body doesn't look quite as good as this one does. Uh, so that's a little bit of a negative. But otherwise, uh, it has everything else that a Spectre has. So the Spectre also has its own bridge. Um, what's neat about the Spectre bridge is that it's cast. And the individual saddles, if you notice, there's no springs. So what happens is there are lock nut, lock screws on either side of the bridge and you loosen those up and by doing that that allows you to move each individual bridge saddle and you set your intonation and then you lock it back in place so it's a high mass bridge it is set sunk into the body so the idea is that it's really going to give you more sustain and get more effect of the body wood and all and you're locking those saddles in place. So that's a Spectre design. All higher end Spectre, low end Spectres have die cast bridges that are more Fender style, but from uh, the Legend series on up, uh, you get a locking Spectre bridge. Usually, um, this one I think might be cast aluminum, but typically the standard one is brass. Brass was huge in the 70s, uh, but that's your Spectre bridge. The neck, is three piece roasted maple and it's a beautiful 
specimen. It's not overly roasted. Very nice. Spectrum necks are always three piece. Uh, again, on all the higher ones up, whether they're neck through or not, maple is what Spectres always use on their necks. Um, this one's nice. It has an app, swamp ash applique that mimics the body and the headstock, so the headstock matches the body. Very nice. And the fretboard on this is Makassar Ebony. It's a nice, nice solid fretboard. Um, five join, five bolt neck join. And again, it balances really well and it's very light and a very easy to play instrument. Uh, very thin neck, uh, which does not have much of a taper. There's not a whole, I didn't, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take up calipers like some guys do. Uh, but there isn't a whole lot of difference in the width from the nut down to the 24th fret. And you do get 24 frets on this. So you have, you have full access, like you said before, with the cutaway. These are EMGs, I think I mentioned that before, EMG uh, pickups, I'm not sure if there's particular ones, I think they're just the stock, regular EMG styles. The thing about that is, any other EMGs can fit in, any other PJ setup should fit in, there's a lot of room in the control cavity right here, your battery's in there, uh, just a pain, but uh, a great platform for modding. modding. Really though, I mean, I think if you're gonna get a Spectre, you want the whole deal with Spectre, you want the look, you want the sound, but your bass, you do what you want. Um, Lobster has an interesting video with dual preamps set up in it, check that out. Uh, but it's a really a decent mod platform because everything is standard on this thing. You can get a decent quality instrument. Take a look around, like I said, almost all the bodies have a funky mix match and all that. Check out online if you want to. Uh, like Sweetwater always has their photo galleries, but... Okay, here, now, let's check out and see what it sounds like. So the controls are pretty simple. You have volume for the P bass, for the P pickup, volume for the J pickup. You have bass boost and treble boost. I think I may have said this was a blend before. Not a blend, individual volumes, which is nice. So let's get an idea of what each one sounds like. So let's here go. This is your P volume. Let's crank this up. And here's your P with all the EQ rolled off. Now I screwed up my little sample there, but I'm just going for the sound. I'm not actually playing a part. So bad notes. You heard it. All right. Let's kick the bass up about halfway. I'll play it right this time. Lot of bass, lot of room for boost in there. Let's put the treble up halfway. up all the way and uh, see how this works. Okay, in the room, that's really overpowering. Um, you still get the definition, which is nice, even though the troubles rolled off all the way, but there's that definite thunk and thud going. So let's go a little treble up all the way. So this is treble and bass up all the way with the P pickup. <laughs> Overpowers the bass a little bit. You still get that underneath. A lot of string noise, very glissy and high end, but that's part of the uh, what makes a Spectre a Spectre. So 
roll the treble back a little, roll the bass back maybe about halfway, and I think... Decent sound, very articulate, hear every note. Let's pull that treble back and put the bass up a little. And a little nicer, a little mellower. Again, you're going to get a lot of articulation out of the spectrum the way this is set with the boost on bass and the treble. So that's what you get and when you get a spectre. This is really very, uh, I think, very uh, true to the nature of what a spectre is. All right, here is the jazz pickup with uh, volume up all the way, EQs all the way off. Nasal, jazz, that's what a jazz bass pickup should sound like. No hum, it is a hum canceling pickup. Um, yeah, I mean, there you go. So, uh, not the best sound on its own, but it's kind of not really meant to do that, be on its own. It's meant to be that little extra flavor. Um, here, let's get the bass up halfway and do it again. Trouble up halfway and get the bass rolled off. Yeah, again, not a tone I could see working on its own. Let's uh, go all all out. Bass and trouble both up all the way. Again, a lot of snap, string noise, very aggressive sounding. Um, yeah. Here's both pickups, up all the way, EQ up all the way. Let's go for it. got your highs and your lows all boosted up very aggressive in your face still very articulate you're hearing every note um, it's not you know true hi-fi but it's more high of what some people would consider to be hi-fi let's uh roll the treble back a lot put that about a third put the bass around two-thirds and it's both pickups <laughs> see the, uh, the bass is up a bit more, the treble's back, the bass overpowers the treble. So whatever you've got more cranked, there's definitely a, a 
you know, definitely a spread in the tone palette. So could be kind of limiting, but you know, if you want, like I said, a really aggressive, articulate tone, really good for metal. Metal probably screaming for something like this. I'm not a metal player, so I can't completely say, but uh, probably slap, not a slapper. Yeah, that's uh, that. That was the uh, the bass was back again on that. That was just the uh, the P pickup. So. Really, in its stock form, this is just really a kick ass, very aggressive, uh, loud bass. If that's your style, that you're looking for, this is a great deal. They go for around twelve hundred dollars. Um, Decent workmanship. Uh, like I said, overall build quality is good. It's, I don't know what they were thinking really on the body. Uh, that's the one negative that I would say on it, just the way the bodies look. But maybe if you can be picky and look around. But uh, even the samples they use in the ads and all that kind of highlight this mismatch. So. For whatever reason, that's what they wanted to go with and get out there. But uh, I mean, if you can get by that, uh, this is a really solid, good base. I mean, twelve hundred dollars. Uh, it's high quality craftsmanship. It's made in Korea. You get a roasted maple neck. Um, is it? Uh, is it competitive? It's very much really in line with the the Ibanez. Maybe the sound gear might be a little bit better value. But that's kind of uh, the market they're going for in there. The Ibanez sound gear style basses. Uh, really, Ibanez took off after Spectre. Uh, as I said, they had Doug Wimbish uh, as one of their uh, guys for a while, and he's a Spectre guy, so they basically made a Spectre Ibanez space for him. Um, yeah. So, overall, you know, decent base, solid value, not the best, not the worst. If you, again, uh, hey, let me know what you think. Uh, but really, I think if, you know, if you're going for that Spectre look, you like the look, you like the sound, this is a, a good solid base for you to go and get with. If you want a bolt-on, uh, you can get the Legend, which is going to be very similar, but it's going to have different woods. It's going to be a neck through. Uh, maybe not as light. I mean, seriously, this is a light, light base. Uh, yeah. Mutant unplug. I mean, wicked, wicked light. <laughs> so there you have it. The Spectre Pulse NS4, or was it the NS Pulse 4? Spectre NS Pulse 4. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. Please uh, feel free to subscribe. Check out my playlist of other base reviews. I got a whole lot more coming up. You can see on the wall back here. Um, I'm going to be making videos on all these bases that are, well, already one. Did one Lobongo, but uh, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Again, thanks for stopping by. Let me know what you think of my new studio, and uh, I'll catch you next time.